Best Daily Podcast. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, Tracy is back co-hosting this week from In Dark Places. How are you doing today, man? What's up, guys? Doing well. Doing well. Oh, yeah. And we're uh, blessed enough to have West Ship and also his sister, Honey, is on as well. How's it going, y'all? Hi there. You said your name right, right? Yeah, yeah. Honey, right. All right. I don't want to mess up on people's names. <laughs> How are you guys doing today, too? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. We got some uh, buffalo bean dip being made right now. Yeah, sipping on some oh. bourbon here in a minute. <laughs> oh man, Kentucky bourbon. <laughs> oh yeah. Is there any other kind? I know, right? <laughs> hey, Dude. so I tried this whiskey the other day. You know that uh, proper twelve stuff that uh, Conor McGregor came out with? Mm. Yeah. Smoothest whiskey I've ever drank. Ooh. Pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm new to your music. I just, I literally just got done listening to some of your stuff. Seth's been telling me about you for about a week now. Love the song, My Old Man. Love it. I mean, I've been blaring it all day long. Just give me a, just a short, quick background of how you got to where you're at right now. All right. Uh, Basically, I've been I've been playing on street corners homeless for like eight or nine years. And uh, about a year ago, I was in Arkansas and had a video go viral on Facebook, me playing outside of a Walmart. And uh, I ended up hooking up with some people in the music business and uh, played my first show with Billy Don Burns, second show with Jay Keith Whitley. And uh, just been shaking a million hands, hoping to sell a million records soon. Nice, shaking hands and kissing babies. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> so, where are you based out of now? I know you you're originally from Florida, right? Where right, where do you right. where are you calling home now? Uh, I'm right outside of Florence, Kentucky, okay. in a, uh, Erlang. I got you. A place called Erlang. Yeah, just I just moved across from Cincinnati there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's around this area too. Oh uh, yeah. I just lost it. Hang on. Oh, I um, think he uh, he lost you guys. <laughs> are you are you there? I, yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you. We can work with that. I can hear you. I don't know what happened to the audio or the video, but I can still hear y'all. So we're good. All right. All right, man. Uh, but yeah, guys. Uh, I I mean, I've heard nothing but positivity from your guys' show at Breathitt County as well. So if you guys want to talk about that, I know you guys played together first night, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, actually, uh, what got me started in music is she had this, uh, this old 19, it was like a 70 something Fender Newporter that she got and this thing was bad. And she taught me one song on it and it was, uh, that song zombie from the cranberries and they wouldn't let me touch it anymore. She like gave me a taste and pulled it away. (laughs) And, uh, we were, we were troubled kids. She got into a little bit of trouble and ended up in a program for like two years and i adopted her guitar without her knowing and I learned how to play it out of vengeance (laughs) yeah and as soon as I got out he said hey sis watch this with my guitar and I was just like hey you're good (laughs) did did he come did when you come back was he better than you was on the guitar and it kind of made you mad he still is (laughs) like man whatever dude yeah it deserves a punch in the gut Hey, she she come out of the woodwork with this like beautiful like angelic voice when she was like 11, 12 years old, wanting to hit the talent show and pulled me into the bedroom and was like, "Hey, you got to listen to this," and I did, and it was this Alanis Morissette song that she did. And man, it, it took me years to get to where I'm at with my voice. I sounded my parents were yelling at me to shut the hell up and close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I started, you know what I mean? Yeah, when when you when you first start, even with your voice as it is an instrument, it seems like you you know you see the TV where these like nine year old kids are learning how to play the trumpet, and their parents are in the living room going, "Oh no, <laughs> yeah yeah I get it. I've I've played music too, so I know my dad, I, my parents how they put up with me learning how to play a drum set, let alone because I can hear music in my head, but all they heard was drums, and you know just sitting around listening to somebody beat on them things after a while, it's like what is this kid doing? Oh yeah, I bought my son a set of drums when he was three, and it was it was more for his mama because we were split up. I thought it'd be a funny joke. He broke him in like a, <laughs> the first day he got him. Yeah, put his foot through the the kick drum and 
Oh, he was a Who fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hell, Razor. That's cool. That's cool. So, yeah, man. oh, sorry, ahead. I didn't mean uh, to. Go ahead, Seth. You're good. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I remember our first interview, man. Hearing your voice, and I was like, "Damn, this guy can absolutely sing." And then when hearing old man, your voice like sounded even different, and like. Your voice can go like from country to rock to everything, man, and that is really impressive. I appreciate, it, man. I, I uh, when I first got into music, I was in uh, orchestra in school. I was playing cello, and yeah. uh, my first band actually, we were kind of like a like a cover band for like Job for a Cowboy and Lamb of God, <laughs> and a lot of the heavier stuff. You know what I mean? Guar. Mm-hmm. And then I got into reggae, and then I mean, I, I'd always listen to country music. That has always been a thing. But uh, I didn't start playing country until I was about 15 or 16. And uh, I started playing my first bars up in Wisconsin. And, uh, yeah, no, I've just kind of been all over with music. I, I, I listen to it all, man, as long as it's not elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> anything what repet- was you? Oh, sorry. What was oh, that? You're good. you're good. I was just saying anything repetitive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who was your guys' was big? Biggest hit. I know I've asked you this question, Wes. So this is for Honey. Who was your biggest inspiration in music? Hmm. I don't think I've ever asked you that. Uh, honestly, I'm so all over the board. Like I'm like him. I'll listen to anything, anything, and I like taking like like certain genres and turning them like into like different genres. Like when I do covers and stuff. I know. But, I know you. You talked a lot about uh, Towns Van Zant being yeah, one of the yeah, big ones. Yeah, yeah. Big songwriter. Yeah, Towns, Towns Van Zant. Like I've watched like all of like the tapes of him just like sitting in his living room, you know, and just like as much stuff John like Prime, that I can read. Blaze yeah. Foley. She's she's really into like the folky songwriter. Yeah. yeah, very simplistic, but with that, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I just mean it's it's basically you, your voice and a guitar and maybe another person. You know, it's very yeah. simplistic, but it's very soul. It's very from the heart. Hell, yeah. we wouldn't have a lot of the artists we have now if it wasn't for them. They they definitely paved the way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like I was watching you do a tribute to Charlie Pride there when um, shortly after he died. I mean, come on, man, that was amazing. That was great. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Charlie Pride was one one of the first I ever started learning. I, I learned how to play guitar, and it was all by ear. My mom and dad had this uh, CD collection. And the first CDs I remember picking up when uh, when I was a kid was a Charlie Pride's Greatest Hits, Alabama's Greatest Hits, and a <laughs> yeah. Don Williams' Greatest Hits, mm. and learned them front to back. So Charlie Pry was always one of the one of the top three of my choice. And he had, I mean, he was just he had so many hits over the years. And people like that, like Charlie Pride, anytime they have a story to tell, because I mean, you think the longevity that he had, how many stories he had just in his lifetime from where he began to the time of his death. I mean, you could make a, you know, they'd make a mini series out of it today, you know. But to me, just not only the music, but just the life of a, of a musician that's had that kind of longevity just is, I want to know it all. I want to know all the story. Uh, I want to know the stories that, that they didn't tell on, you know, the biography channel or whatever, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, they, they call that dying with your boots on. And, uh, <laughs> when you get that old and you're still doing the, doing the dance, like him, Don Williams. Uh, Don Williams is a big one. Man, to get the the privilege to have a fifty year, fifty plus year career in music, and you know, still be doing what you're what what you love when you die. Or at the time, Merle Haggard was another one. Hag was there till the end. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Sure. And, and just think, like, like Hank Williams Sr. If he wouldn't have died at what is it, twenty twenty some years old. What kind of story could he have told, you know? And it it's just, so many. oh, yeah. It's just, to me, those are, they just, you feel it, you know, when you, when you, they're singing and, they're, you know, they're telling the story. It's like, wow, that's really cool. I used to love Buck Owens and I always thought of Buck, you know, all through his career was in, in, and all up through Hee Haw and even beyond with Dwight and things and just what they've seen, where they've been what they've played, you know, with all the different people, you know, how cool would it be just like Dwight Yoakam, just pick up the phone and say, I'm going to call Buck Owens today. You know, how cool is that? You know, 
<laughs> Definitely, man. I've got I've gotten a few really close relationships in the business since since I've been doing the thing, and uh, two of them that really really stuck close in my corner was uh, was Rowdy Johnson and uh, Dallas Moore so far, and. Uh, yeah, and you were basically starstruck with them. I was, man. <laughs> Just giddy but, jumping. <laughs> but you'd have to understand, and you'd have to see Dallas pick a guitar live to yeah. understand where I'm coming from. Like, he's he's as good, if not better, than Billy Strings, in my opinion. Oh, I can't. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, and I'm not, not saying this because you're on here, but I think one day somebody's going to come up to you and they're going to be starstruck. That's just – I really do. I really feel that. Appreciate it, man. I'm yeah. his fan, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, if from what I hear, we're gonna—I mean, we're, we're gonna hear some, you two sing one off. You may be doing the same thing. Somebody one day might, you know, somebody may come up to you and ask for an autograph. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I'll probably blush. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure. I'm sure everybody does their first couple hundred times. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's weird when it happens because I've had I had this kid uh I it still shocks me when I find people that have like paid attention to my story like I was talking to uh Nick Geis that played with uh Billy Gant David Allen Co and then he's traveling around with Dallas right now and I didn't know that he had seen my my uh my viral video when it happened and he'd been following me the whole time I was just as struck as he was when i met him because i was like holy hell he's played with bat forever man like and here this guy's coming to admire you and you're thinking oh uh, you, yeah you know you get that like look over your shoulder like is he talking to me you know yeah, yeah he called me up randomly on the way to a gig one day after i i played uh, a show with him in dallas and he was just like man i know who you are and i was like what like how <laughs> no, yeah i know who you are but i don't know how you know i <laughs> exactly it was weird man i don't think i'll ever get used to it uh well that's that's a good thing not to get used to you know if if you never get you know lose that excitement of somebody coming up to you and asking you for an autograph or or a picture or just to spend you know a minute talking you know that's without fans you know all we, uh, well all we do is sing you know yeah yeah it's it's really the people that and the bigger the fan got the more of a best friend they became i got one that uh he comes to all my shows him and his him and his uh wife uh jake and carrie if uh y'all get to watch this y'all rock man yeah love like, you guys <laughs> solid since day one man first ones to buy my t-shirts first one to stream my song as soon as it come out like mm -hmm. and it, it's it's cool, man. When you get people that follow you like that, it it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, super fans. Like yeah. You. Yeah. Well, if you ever make it up around, say, Ashland, Kentucky, Huntington, West Virginia way, I'll definitely be be on the way to see you. Oh, yeah. I'll be in Virginia soon. I got to talk to uh, the guy that runs the venue that me and Jesse Keith are playing at on Wednesday. But uh, I should be in Virginia here soon. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah man. We, oh, sorry about that. I was just going to say, we got up, up towards Ashland, Kentucky, which is right – if you look at Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky, they're all together right there on the Ohio River. And, I, I mean, I've, and I've mentioned this several times. It must be in the water of this area because there's so many – there's so much talent comes out of here. And, I mean, you're looking – you know, the judge, they're from Ashland. I mean, they, they grew up less than two miles from me, you know. Um, you got guys like Earl Thomas Conley grew up in Portsmouth just down the road. Bobby Bear, uh, Loretta Lynn. I mean, they're all right here in this area. And, I mean, there's a huge fan base right here. I'm sure it'll it'll get big. Oh, yeah, the whole Appalachian area has got nothing but just good raw music coming out of it, especially right now. I mean, it's on a big incline. Yes, it is. We've talked about that, too. And what is, what's kind of sad is you think about um, – you, you get back up in the backsides of these hollers – and there's so much talent that we'll never hear because th they just won't come out. You know, they, they play like a family never reunions. Left that mountain. Yeah. You know I mean, the, there's a lot the, of them that ain't never seen electricity before. But no. The hell out of a guitar. And the talent will just stay right there and we'll never hear it. And that's, that's sad to me. Yeah. yeah. Like that's like Jeff's family and my uh, husband, we go to family, family uh, reunions and I was floored the first time I ever went to one because it's a bunch of, you know, 
80, 90, you know, 70, 60 year old, you know, people sitting around just, I mean, over in Amish country in Tennessee. Like, oh yeah. Like you just want to cry. Like you walk in and it's like, am I, am I in heaven? Is this a dream? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, there's a ton of talent. Yeah. yeah. Like they don't even realize it. You know, they're just like, Oh, I just pick a little. And I'm like, or this is a family thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they're so humble. You think they're so humble. They're just like, you know, well, we're just picking, you know, it's nothing special. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, man. You, they, they. Oh, sorry, man. No, you're good. Go ahead, Sam. It, it's hard with Zoom because uh, you can't tell when people are getting ready to talk and stuff because mm -hmm. you see them in little bitty squares. But my bad about that. But uh, I know you got a show with uh, Jesse Keith Whitley, who's a very talented guy, Keith Whitley's son. And you're uh, that's in Somerset, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Wednesday starts at eight. It'll be a Keith Whitley revival that we're doing. Me, him, and uh, Brian Moffitt. Yeah, and where's that at exactly in Somerset? Uh, I think it's called 80 West Country Music in Somerset or West 80. Let me check real quick. I'll tell you right now. It is. Sorry. Yeah, West 80 Country Music in Somerset. Yeah, man, that's definitely showing everybody is going to want to see for sure. Can't wait, man. Super excited. I've, I've, so, my first show was with, uh, well, my second show was with Jesse Keith, and uh, he was supposed to be playing Breath of the Rising and ended up getting uh, laryngitis before the show. But, uh, if, um, who is, if, when you get to the point to where you sing with a certain person, and when you're done and you walk off stage and you tell yourself, now I have made it. Who would that be? Hmm. <laughs> Eric Church. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Eric Church. He's been, he's, I, I've probably followed him more than anybody, man. He, he pulled me through my, uh, my divorce, uh, all that stuff, man. It, if it hadn't been for a few songs out of a few of those albums, I, I wouldn't be here today. That's the guy you can go. And now I have made it. Oh, yeah. No, that's cool. Either him or Morgan Wallen. Love some Morgan Wallen. He's a great singer. Oh, yeah. And He's great, awesome. great songwriter. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just the the stories and that that's the that's the whole background of a good country music song is the story if it doesn't take you through a story in you know three and a half minutes or four it's really not that great of a song you can just chant words but the stories that he tells in three minutes is amazing i think he's got the total package because not only can he tell a story the way he delivers it, he could sing the back of a cereal box if he wanted to and it would sound yeah. good having that on top of the dynamic of him pushing out such good good songs like that's that's scary dude oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it, that. it's almost like he's lived every song that he's wrote exactly exactly and, and i mean it doesn't matter what he's writing about the you it's almost like you can tell he's looking out his back door and seeing it and writing it down yeah i, I feel the same way about uh about eric church for sure like there, there's just certain songs you're like damn who hurt you or damn i feel that or <laughs> i'm gonna yeah back. i'm gonna raise a glass to you man i feel bad for you <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> right he's got yeah. one that i've been covering at my shows for a while called uh where she told me to go off of one of his older albums and the wordplay I, I, it's uh i've noticed all the songs i've really liked by him were written by a dude named casey bethard or co-written with Casey Bethard. And that guy is, uh, Tucker Bethard's his son. Okay. He, is, he is such a badass, man. The wordplay he uses is just unreal. Yeah, that's, and you know, a lot of that, like you said, from the, just being in Appalachia, that's, uh, those are the stories that are going on here. You know, what he's talking about. That's could have happened to you, could happen to me, could have happened to this guy next door. It's, it's something that we all, have lived or could have be living and see that i think that's what country radio doesn't realize is that the the uh, audience they're trying to appease to not everybody has gotten a 
big badass jacked up pickup truck from their daddy that they go and watch the stars with their girlfriend cut off blue jeans you know right. not all of us have loved that part right uh, some of us were on the poor side of the spectrum yeah, growing up sleeping under overpasses and stuff like me and you yeah and, and you're right and it's it's the hollywood side of country music is actually killing the business in my personal opinion but yeah with you guys like you and Morgan Wallen and these guys that are coming up, you know, it's almost like a new branch of outlaw country coming up versus the Hollywood pop. Hey, look how muddy my truck is How You know, <laughs> your clay will never be redder than mine. And, and it's just the same stuff over and over and over. And it's just, oh, yeah. it appeals to 16 year old kids, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's what they want to listen to. And unlike unlike the sixteen year old kids that it's appeasing to, like I grew up, I grew up a hard life. You know, what I mean, I, I was I was on drugs and homeless and seen seen more than somebody at the age of twenty eight should have seen. You know, what I mean, sure, and sure. I, I connect more with you know like the Merle Haggard stuff. Like I, I did a lot of the same stuff that Hag sang about in his songs: the hop and the freight trains, the sure, being on the road, the just. You know what I mean, yeah, the, no, exactly. the highway shit. You yeah, know what I mean, you know, like I said, sleeping under overpasses. You know, like <laughs> like walking around with a backpack and a there, dog and a like, guitar. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. There, there were some days I I'd made two or three dollars that, that day just playing music, and that's what I was stuck with eating. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like a sandwich and like a tall boy, so you can go oof. go to bed behind the bush. That's yeah. a, that's truly singing for your supper for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you guys want to put one out on us? Uh, you got got your guitar close? Yeah, uh, let me go grab my capo real quick. Sure, man. And I'm uh, a drink real quick. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, Wes. Uh, what upcoming shows do you have? Uh, I got this one on Wednesday. Um... July 19th, me and Honey play at Mutt's Tavern in Trenton, Ohio. Um, let's see, on the 10th, I got something too. Oh, yeah, the 10th, I'm playing at uh, PT's on the Hill in uh, Walnut Hill, Illinois. And then August 20th and 21st, we got Bikers Cruising for a Cure going on. It'll be me, Rowdy Johnson, Taylor Hernley, you, uh, Miss Sasha, be, be quite a few people. Yeah. What, what upcoming shows do you got, honey? Well, like right now, like I just got up here, so I'm just kind of trying to get settled and find a place. My husband's trying to find a job, and we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So, so I'm just doing stuff with him, like, for a few weeks until I can get in the groove. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting her back in the loop of things. Yeah, like I, I haven't played for years. Like I got three babies, so I've been doing, like, <laughs> the whole mom thing, you know, and he's like, hey, like you need to come up here and play music with me. And I was like, you know what? I think I will. <laughs> you got you already got three jobs. Now you're doing music on the side, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, – we're going to – we're gonna flip the roles and uh, do a uh, Kenny Chesney song that uh, you, and you and Tequila. Oh yeah. One, two, three, four. Baby. 
days and 30 nights Been putting up a real good fight There were times I thought you would leave It's so easy to forget The bitter taste the morning left Swore I wouldn't go back there Heck yeah, man. You I'm guys killed you. it. Yeah, appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. One day, one day, you guys are going to have to do a duet, an entire album of old country song, maybe some Loretta and Conway, you know, yeah. something. But I'm going to tell you, honey, you sound like the most bluesiest Cheryl Crow I've ever heard, if she lived the life of Dottie West, if that oh makes sense. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is awesome. That was great. That just made my whole day. I've been going through some tough stuff, and I swear that's just I got like I'm, a I'm, I'm not kidding you. I was sitting here thinking she you sound like if Sarah Crow was born in the deepest part of Mississippi but lived like Dottie West. That's that's what I'm hearing. Well, thank you. Thank you. I super appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Dottie, she's the one that did uh somebody's gonna give you yeah that's right yeah and i mean wes you did pretty good too i mean <laughs> I try, i'm just trying to keep up man <laughs> no, i'm just messing with you man no it was it was great see i could i could hear that and and when i say that i mean that when when a lot of artists redo things they do it a little different and that's fine i'm that's cool they want to put their own little thing on it but to me just you two and a guitar that's an album. That's it. You don't need fancy, you know, editing. You don't need no auto tuning crap. You don't need them, you know, a big studio like how, setup. Uh, Miranda Lambert and John Randall and uh, Jack Ingram just come out with that album. Oh, yeah. That, oh man. I would love to do something like that with him, like with him. Like, and, and it's funny because like I can't play with like or sing with no one else. I, like I just like to <laughs> like do it with him or. I'm a, you guys could record that in the bathroom. You know what I mean? You know, just. <laughs> In our bathroom too yeah <laughs> but yeah that's that's amazing i love that song appreciate you man yeah thank you and uh where can guys find you on facebook youtube and all that and definitely send me the links and i'll put in the description oh yeah uh you can find me on facebook pandora spotify itunes amazon uh instagram and uh soon to be twitter i'm about to make a twitter account and, and then uh, my Facebook is Honey Right, and we're actually making my music page today. <laughs> so once awesome. that's done, it'll be Honey Right Music. Yeah, yeah you can find her on 
You can find yeah. her on uh, Instagram too. Yeah, yeah. On Instagram, it's honey bee yourself, but like a honey bee, like a little bee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Use that to your advantage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we do. The banner's got honeycombs all over it. Her oh. music banner. <laughs> Just dri- <laughs> dripping That's with genius. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. And Tracy, what do you got upcoming with uh, In Dark Places podcast? Uh, normal podcast comes out Wednesday. You can hear it on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, me and Junebug. Um, but I'm doing a show with you tomorrow with Don Neal, with the, one of the uh, guys from the KBRO. So looking forward to that. I haven't talked to Don in a couple of years, so Don's a good friend of mine. Yeah, man, we're going to be talking about Bigfoot. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's real. Yeah, we're from Florida. We know he's real. Yeah, he's I know. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got skunk ape down there. Yeah. Yeah, we got, we got skunk ape. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going to your all's Facebook, and I'm I'm sending I'm getting requested here as soon as I get off with you guys. So. Hell yeah. You guys just made me a big fan. <laughs> right on. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yeah, your guys' links will definitely be in the description, and uh. I want to thank you guys for being on for sure. And, uh, honey, I will uh, text you about setting up an interview for you as well. And, uh, Wes, I definitely plan on having you on again for sure. Anytime, man. You just holler at me. You know how to get hold of me. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate you all having me on tonight. Absolutely. Guys, good to meet you. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Wes and his sister, honey, for being on. I want to thank Tracy for co-hosting. Y'all have a good night, and uh, God bless.